Welcome to The Past People, where I will talk about the people of the past. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories, and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them. Princess Marie Therese Louis of Savoy was born on the 18th September 1749 and was a member of the Savoy Carignano, Savoy Carignano cadet branch of the House of Savoy. She was 17 when a marriage was arranged with Louis Alexander de Bourbon, Prince de Lambelle, who was the heir to the greatest fortune in France. Her marriage did not last long and she was widowed within a year. A widow at 18 and childless, she lived with the Duke de Penthia as an adopted daughter and this is when she went to the court and became confidant of Queen Marie Antoinette, who had taken pity on her. According to Madame Campag, the Queen's chambermaid, it was the time of the slaying parties that the Queen became intimately acquainted with the Princess de Lambelle, who made her appearance in them, wrapped in fur with all the brilliancy and freshness of the age of twenty, the emblem of spring peeping from under sable and ermine. Her situation rendered her curiously interesting, married, when she was barely past childhood, to a young prince who ruined himself by the contagious example of the Duke de Orleans. She had nothing to do from the time of her arrival in France but to cry. Although her reputation for being lovely but ditzy is not entirely true, she was highly intelligent and cultured. Marie Antoinette made Madame de Lambelle the superintendent of her household over other more likely courtiers due to their friendship that they had. They became great friends and the queen was used to live in with other females and tried to recapture the home she left in Austria that she shared with her older sister Maria Carolina, and she found great solace in sharing this with the Princess de Lambelle. However, the Queen would distance herself, instead preferring the company of the Polignacs, as it was evident that Madame de Lambelle was too intelligent for her. She remained friends with her from a distance, but they were not as close as they once were. Thousands of people were murdered during the French Revolution, and brutal methods were used on many of them. One of the most hideous stories of murder during this time, and one of the most famous, is that of Princess de Lambelle, friend of Queen Marie Antoinette. Her close relationship with the Queen may have made her a bigger target to such harsh forms of torture and murder. The French were furious regarding the new order of liberty, equality and fraternity, and this fueled extreme violence in order to push their agenda. The princess was ironically more liberal than other aristocrats, and she was passionate and devoted to charity work, making her murder even more atrocious. When the revolution erupted in 1789, Madame de Lambelle returned to France from the safety of England to stand in solidarity with the troubles of her royal family. Lambelle grew close to the king's sister, Madame Elizabeth of France, and was said to be disgusted how the Masonic principles had caused such a violent rebellion. During the revolution, the royal family were arrested and sent to the Temple Prison in August 1792. Lambelle became separated from them and was sent to a different prison called La Force. Lambelle was given over to the violent mob who were massacring people in the streets because she refused to drop her loyalty towards the king and queen. She would not go against her own beliefs to save her own life. The details of her death are devastating. She was bludgeoned and stabbed to death and there are allegations that she was raped and mutilated. Axel de Fersen was to write to the Duke of Sodomanland that the Princess de Lambelle was most fearily tortured for four hours. My pen jibs at given details they tore off her breasts with their teeth and then did all possible for two whole hours to force her back to consciousness to make her death the more agonising. It is alleged that when the princess was handed to the out-of-control mob that she was either hit from behind or she was run into with a sword and then disemboweled. In a fury of violence, she was allegedly stripped, tortured and dreadfully mutilated by the delighted mob who were intent on using Princess Lambelle's body as a symbol of the loathing for the Queen. After this, she was decapitated and her head, heart and genitalia were placed on pikes and paraded along with her naked mutilated body through the streets before being waved in front of the windows of the temple so that Marie Antoinette could see them 
before being dumped at a boundary stone on the Rue Saint Antoine. Hannette Clary gave an account of how the mob brought her head on a pike to the temple prison for the Queen to kiss. We were hardly seated before a head at the end of pike was presented at the window. Tyson's wife screamed loudly. The murderers thought it was the Queen's voice and we heard frantic laughs of those barbarians. Thinking that Her Majesty was still at table, they had raised the victim's head so that it could not escape her sight. It was that of Princess de Lambelle. Though bloody, it was not disfigured. Her blonde hair, still curling, floated around the pike. Such brute force and excessive violence became a statement of the French Revolution, fueled by biased propaganda which took advantage of the fears of the common people. It highlighted the highly misogynist men of the new order and hatred for women and all that was beautiful. While no one can dispute that the unfortunate princess came to a violent end, beaten and probably stabbed to death before being decapitated at the forced prison, it seemed that her death may have also been a form of propaganda and that the grisly details of entrails being used as belts, her heart being eaten and false moustaches being fashioned out of her pubic hair, used to fuel further hysteria. Princess de Lambeau was ultimately murdered for being a friend of Marie Antoinette, the Queen, that the French blamed for all that was bad in France, but she remained loyal to her family and the royals until the bitter end. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories, and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.